right, we're going to talk about this. What the heck just happened to the stock of Red Hat? This is a software company I've liked for a long time. The, the world's number one provider of Linux-based open source operating systems for business, along with a, a host of other offerings for middleware, virtualization, and storage software that's increasingly been moving to the cloud. But last night, Red Hat reported. Today, the stock got absolutely obliterated. Pumbled $11, uh, nearly 14%. Here's the thing. Even though Red Hat posted a three-cent earnings speed off of 58-cent basis, the revenue did come in slightly below Wall Street's expectations, up 17.5% year-over-year. And more important, we saw a deceleration in the all-important key metric for this kind of enterprise software, which is billings. It was up just 9%, down from 19% and 16% in the previous two quarters. And we monitor that very closely. That's a pretty big change, and not for the better. Although it turns out this is mostly because some big government deals slipped into the next quarter, but there could be other reasons. Adding insult to injury, management lowered the revenue outlook for the rest of their fiscal year, even as they actually raised their earnings forecast by a few cents. Oh, and cherry on top, the CFO, Frank Calderoni, a favorite of mine, someone who has come on Mad Money to represent the company, a rarity on a CEO interview-based show, is stepping down in January. Ouch! Nobody likes it when the CFO steps down. When it happens on top of a guy down, well, you get a hideous decline like we had today. This is obviously not what people wanted to see. But we have to wonder, has the market overreacted with the sell-off? After all, Red Hat indicated that billings would pick up again next quarter, back to the mid-teens. Their largest customers keep renewing their contracts, and the company's still signing a ton of big deals at higher prices. So is this a buying opportunity in the stock of a high-quality company that simply hit a speed bump? Or do we need to be more concerned about its future? Let's check in with Jim Whitehurst, president and CEO of Red Hat, hear more about the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Whitehurst, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having me back. All right, Jim, first of all, I, I am thrilled that you came on on an obviously tough day for the stock. It wasn't like you said, I'm not coming on Mad Money. I do have to ask you, though, it, you, when you say in your own words, we faced a few challenges that tempered the growth of some of the items in our report of results, I immediately think this tempered the, uh, the growth, meaning that business actually got softer or competition came in to take business away. This was uh, really a couple of specific deals. What we tried to uh, convey on the call is we had phenomenal deal metrics across the board. Unfortunately, those were masked by a couple of large government deals that didn't close, uh, which we believe was uh, due to the continuing uh, uh, resolution legislation as well as the changing government. Those deals are on track to close now. And with those two deals, we would have been in mid-teens. And we even guided mid-teens for next quarter on our all-important billings number. So we really do think this was an air pocket related to two deals that just, uh, given the changing government, um, had a bit of an impact on us. Okay, now in the conference call, it, it got very caught up in the notion of short-term and long-term paying. And uh, I have to side with one of my favorite analysts and friend, Heather Bellini, who said that she actually used it on the conference. She just, I just don't understand it. She didn't understand. Should we just be, uh, did we just get off track in the conference call talking about short-term versus long-term pay and really should just be focusing on long-term strength of the business itself? Well, look, we can look at long-term and short-term, but what we've always said on billings is it's volatile in any one quarter. And so we did our best to explain the, both the long-term and the short-term. Short-term was due to a couple of government deals. Long-term uh, was due to some really massive deals that we did. And we called out two of the deals alone that were you know, combined at well over $40 million, which only build one year at a time. Uh, if you put those two things together, that's about $47 million in billings, which would have put us way, way, way over the top. So this really was optics around just literally four deals uh, and where they fell. All right. Were you happy yourself with the execution of your company this quarter? Oh, we're absolutely happy. If we look overall at the business, uh, we continue to perform extremely well. Uh, we guided cash flow next quarter up 22 to 28 percent. We never guide billings because it is volatile, but it, because of the slowdown, we actually guided mid-teens billings, so a rebound in billings, which is to convey that we see a lot of strength in the business and feel uh, very good about where we are, where we're going. All right, so just want to be sure, those four deals that come back in, you would not have had that billings growth, and it would have been a better quarter. With those four deals alone, we would have had you know, very high teens to low 20s billings growth, which would have been well above where uh, Wall Street was. Okay, but you understand also, I mean, let's talk about Frank, your CFO, leaving. I don't have CFOs on the show. I probably have like three or four. He's one of them, and he's one of them because he is key management, okay? So you understand that when he leaves, it is actually, I don't like it when a CFO leaves, candidly, but, and we're showing some video of when he was here, but you know, when, he, when you were uh, uh, not available, I was thrilled to have Frank on because he is a great spokesperson for where he works. So you understand the impact. It was not just some CFO leaving. 
Yeah, I fully understand that. But, I mean, as you know, the quality of, of someone like uh, Frank Calderoni, he's an extraordinary executive, and he was always more of a CEO in waiting. And, you know, an opportunity came up, and um, he will be a CEO. And he, when he came to Red Hat, he said his aspiration was to be a CEO. So I fully understood that. And obviously the timing's not perfect, but he has a great opportunity, which – you know, ultimately, he'll talk a little more about in January. And so, you know, that I think this was to be expected at some point. It's just unfortunately is this quarter. OK, so we have a, a litany, though, we got to address. Workday reported a quarter. People regard that as cloud, not that strong. Oracle reported a quarter that was really the legacy business wasn't that strong, but the cloud wasn't strong enough to offset it. Accenture yesterday said tougher times coming. How do we know that Red Hat isn't part of that whole litany, that narrative? Well, and that's why we tried to provide uh, some guidance for Q4 um, that we would say is actually quite strong. Again, cash flow up 22 to 28 uh, percent. We guided that uh, mid-teens billing saw a rebound in billings. So we're trying to convey we see a very, very strong pipeline. Unlike some of the companies you mentioned, some of those actually were okay in the quarter and they actually guided down. We were the, the reverse. We had um, a, a soft patch in this quarter. If anything, we guided across most measures much more positively than we typically do. And we tried to be very transparent about the very specific down to the deal level level of what caused us uh, to miss on some of those metrics this quarter. Okay, are you surprised that more people didn't key on the fact that 25 of 25 renew of, of your biggest guys were up and they all 25 renewed and they did so at more than 120% of their prior annual commitment, which to me is a better metric if you're trying to think longer term about Red Hat? Well, absolutely. We talked about every one of our 30 deals was over $2 million. That's the first time that's ever happened. We had 72 deals that were in total that were over a million dollars. That's 20% more than we've uh, ever had in a Q3. So overall, we had really, really strong uh, deal measures. But as you said, you know, this is a business that's, that's measured on billings. And so billings was, uh, was light. And we worked to explain why, but certainly understand there's a negative reaction when that happens. All right, Jim, one last question. We do have a new minister administration coming in. Uh, it does have a bit of a different tone to it. I know that the first thing that uh, President-elect Trump did was call executives, uh, including some executives he thinks uh, it cost the government too much. Are you going into a new regime where the federal government may be even more slow because they're concerned that the president may find out how much money somebody's spending on something and really want to take a look at it? We actually see that as a benefit uh, for Red Hat in two ways. First off, we are heavily weighted in our government's um, business to defense and uh, intelligence, which I think conventional wisdom says will actually likely get more funding in a Trump administration. And then secondly, you know, as you know, in the fact that we've had uh, literally 59 quarters of uh, increasing revenue growth cons consecutively, we do really well in soft markets. So we continue to grow well in 2008. Right. So when... Budgets get tight. People look for value, and open source is generally seen as a lower-cost alternative. So I think a larger spending environment in general, especially on the defense and, and intelligence side, and more pressure to get better deals uh, is, a, is a really good sign for us, uh, for our business uh, in the public sector going forward. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you so much to Jim Whiters, president and CEO of Red Hat. Good to see you, sir, as always. Great to see you, Jim. Thanks for having me. On a tough day for the stock, the CEO comes on. I think that that alone is a better sign. Think a little longer term. Red Hat's got a great long term model. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.